Hi again. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you our first little pieces of analysis in uh, studio uh, using the chocolate and Nobel Prize winners data as an example. Uh, in the first video we read that data in from Excel into R and now we're going to do a little bit of analysis. So I'm going to start from scratch again just to remind you of that. We've, I've just loaded up R Studio and there's nothing here right so we're going to go back and do those first couple of steps again we're going to go into our directories and find where our files are uh, now i've got a, a directory now called video 2 which has in it chocolate.r which is the little script file that we uh, wrote last time and i'll just click on that and there it is so that's the single command to read in the data that was in this csv file and to place it in the data frame called choc underscore df. Okay, now before we do any more, I'm just going to set this as our working directory as I did last time. So any more files that are read or created uh, will all be within that video number two directory. All right, let's just quickly run that, make sure everything is still in working order. So I clicked on source, Source came up here, there were no error messages. If something goes wrong, you'll get some error messages down here in the console. I'll no doubt you'll see that at some stage as I'm making these videos and make an error. And if we look in our environment, here is our data, uh, data frame as before with those, with those variables. So the first thing that we'll do is to create a scatter plot, much like the one that we saw in, uh, in the paper, like this, okay? Uh, now it takes a bit of work to create a scatter plot with all those flags on there, we're not going to do that, but we can at least create a scatter plot and see how our updated data compares with what was in this, within this paper. So R has some nice uh, graphing facilities, it's one of the strengths of the package. Uh, we'll just do some simple stuff now to get started. Uh, the command, so what we're going to do is a scatter plot, okay? A scatter plot that has uh, Nobels on the y-axis and chocolate per capita on the x-axis. So let's do that. The command is plot. Uh, and then we go x and y. And the way that we specify the x and y axes is we put in, first of all, the name of the data frame. Okay, chocdf is the data frame that we created in the previous command. And then the x-axis is going to be chocolate per capita and the y-axis is going to be data frame dollar uh, nobels okay so the syntax here is data frame dollar variable name okay the dollar is a separator between the data frame and the variable name uh, and that's it so okay scatter plot so plot will by default do a, a scatter plot when we give it these two two variable names like this so let's run that and see what that does I click on source and now we have this plots uh, tab or window becomes active over here. Uh, now I'm making this on a, uh, a small laptop, but probably a bit like what many of you have as well. And when you first view it, the plot might come up a little bit small. So why don't we make that a bit bigger, like that. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? That gives you a good idea of the shape of the relationship that we're dealing with here. It looks not exactly the same as in the paper, but it looks pretty similar, right? We have this nice positive relationship. We have, you know, a bit more variation in the top end than we have in the bottom end. That's coming up here as well, okay? Now, what we can do if we want to, and we generally will, is to make this scatter plot here look a little bit nicer. In particular, these axis labels uh, could be better, couldn't they? So let's do that. We'll give it, uh, this plot some better labels. And the way that we'll do it is we'll go X label. So that's the command to be a label for the X axis. And we'll put in something like uh, chocolate consumption. Okay, on the x-axis, and the y label can be Nobel Prizes. Okay, nice and simple. Now you can click source again and it will rerun, and there we have now Nobel Prizes here and chocolate consumption over there. If you wanted to, you could give this graph a title as well. So we could kind of go main is the main 
title for the plot. Okay, and we could go um, no, oops, Nobel prizes versus chocolate consumption or something else, whatever you want to call it. Okay, um, and we can run that, and then we have our title. Uh, all right, that's our scatter plot. Now we don't. I'll show you in a minute that we can also put a regression line through here to emphasize the nature of the linear relationship. But in order to put a regression line through here, we need to be able to run a regression. So that's our next uh, next challenge. And here is how we're going to do that. We're going to first of all create an equation. So remember, eViews has these objects that sit within work files, and R works much the same way. We create these uh, objects. In this case, I'll just call it an equation object. Now, this is a name that I'm making up. Equation number one. Okay, that's my choice of name. And then this arrow symbol. So, and then we will go LM. LM is a is a linear model. Okay, and uh, we're going to use this uh, linear model for estimating a linear regression. The dependent variable is Nobel's, and our explanatory variable is chocolate. Capita. Right, so the syntax that we've used there is the y variable followed by a tilde and then on the right hand side we list the explanatory variables. In this case it's just one explanatory variable. You don't have to list the intercept, that's automatically included. You just have to list the rest of the variables. So we'll look at multiple regressions later. This is just a simple regression for now. And we need to specify also what the data frame is. So the data frame is choc underscore df. Okay, so that's the general command that you use to run a linear regression in R. Okay, LM for linear model, then the specification, dependent variable, tilde, explanatory variables, and then you need to specify the data frame in which those variables can be found. If you forget to do this, then you'll come up with uh, an error message when you try to run the program. Uh, this arrow here, so the, a, a lot and lots of the R commands will have the same kind of format where we have a command over here on the right and over here on the left we're going to have an object name. Okay, so LM creates an equation object and puts it, gives it a name, so equation one in this case. And that's it, so we can source that. And now if we look in our environment we have our data frame, just as before, I'll close that. And now we have this new equation, equation one. This is the new object that we've just created. Now, you can click on that. It's not overly helpful. As you can see, if you just click on this equation, it gives you a lot of stuff, right? If you're an R expert, that means something to you, but I don't recommend you look at it, an equation that way. Instead, Let's just issue another command which gives us some idea of the results that we've got from this regression. So we'll go print summary and equation one. So we've done two things in one in that command. First of all, we've created a summary of that equation number one. So remember this equation one behind the scenes in R is a big mess with all this stuff in it that we, that we can't really understand. So first of all, this summary creates a, a, a readable summary of the equation, which we're going to see, and then print just prints it on the screen. Okay, not to a printer, just prints it on the screen, and it'll print it on the console where we can where we can read it. So let's do that. Okay, so we've recreated our graph. We've seen that. We're happy with that for now. Uh, let's just go back now and take a look at the summary. So this is the first time we've seen some output being uh, printed on the console. Here it is. So first of all it tells you what was the command that you ran to create this equation. Okay, What you did was a linear model whose formula consisted of Nobel's on the left, chocolate per capita on the right, with data taken from the chocolate uh, data frame. 
The stuff that we're most interested in seeing first of all and what we're most familiar with is this information right here. These are our coefficients, okay, so the intercept, minus 8.2499, uh, the slope, the coefficient on chocolate uh, consumption is 3.08. We have our usual standard errors, our usual t-statistics and the usual p-values that you're used to seeing. So this all is just the same as you've seen before in eViews or any other software package that you might have used. Very standard stuff. And what you can see uh, with this p-value being 0.0005, it's a very small p-value, less than 0.05, less than 0.01, we have a significant, statistically significant relationship between chocolate consumption and Nobel Prizes with a, with a positive sign here. So that qualitatively that is matching what was found in that New England Journal of Medicine paper. Uh, a couple of other things here that would be familiar to you from second year. We've got an R squared of 0.47 or 0.48, so we're explaining you know, about half the variation in the dependent variable here. And the F statistic, which in this case is just testing the significance of the chocolate per capita variable again. But in general, that's the kind of the joint regression F statistic that I'm sure you've seen before. In addition, uh, R by default prints out the, uh, some statistics for the residuals, the minimum, the maximum, and the, and the quartiles. We won't make a lot of use of those, but obviously we will make a lot of use of these coefficients and the standard errors and the resulting inference that will come from those. We're going to talk more about those as we go along through, uh, through the semester. Now, one thing that we can do just to finish this off is how about we put that regression line onto our plot? Okay, there's, so there's a command to do that, which is called AB line, and we're going to put in here equation one. Um, now, AB line is a command which adds a line to the most recent graph, which is this one right here, this plot that we've just created. And uh, there's a number of different ways of specifying a line, but the simplest way in R to specify a line to add to a plot is that you just put in an equation name. And what R automatically does is it says, when it sees that equation object sitting there, it says, oh, I know what you want to do. You want to take the fitted values from that equation and plot them onto this scatter plot. So it does it for you. You don't need to create the fitted values and add them to the plot or stuff like that. Uh, Evie just does it with that command Sorry, R just does it with that command right there. So if we run that and re-enlarge this picture, we get something like that, um, which now has the regression line included there as well. All right, one thing you might want to do, having created such a nice picture, is to save that picture. Okay, you can always recreate that picture. Anytime you run this little R script, you'll get that picture back again within the R window. But let's suppose you want to export it and include it in a Word document, for example, uh, for a report or an assignment or, or something like that. So you can go to this export, okay, and you can save this plot as an image or as a PDF as you choose. Let's go for an image for now. Um, and it then gives you some options, right? PNG is the image format. You can choose others. If you want to save a JPEG or something or other else, you can do that. Uh, PNG will do for now. Uh, you can give it a file name. So just type in here whatever you want to call it. You know, Nobel's versus chocolate or something. Doesn't matter. Uh, you can change the directory if you like. You can see that it's defaulted to the current working directory. Uh, if you're happy with how the picture looks, then you can just leave it like this. You can adjust how the picture looks. You know, you can kind of stretch it and shrink it and stuff like that uh, on the screen until you've got it looking just how you like it. That's quite a large picture, but we go to about there. And you can also change the width and the height using numbers, which is equivalent to just moving this around so you can make it look just how you like it. So once all of that is sorted, you can then just go save. And having done that, and if we have a look in our files window again, there it is. There's your PNG, and if you click on that, um, R Studio will just go and open your graphics previewer, and it will give you a look at the at the picture. Now, what you can do is go into Word now um, and open up a directory, Video 2 directory, where this graph has been saved. And we can just pop it into a document, okay? 
So you've now got that graph in your document and you can set about you know, writing your assignment or your report or something uh, around, around, that, around that graph. Um, okay, so we will, we will leave that there for now.